Joining Felita Harris is Megan Farrell. Megan, it's so great to see you um, in, in person. I know. I know. <laughs> um, you know what I love about your background is that you are a dope with what they call in tech a domain expert. <laughs> this is what you do. Sustainability is what you do. So um, can you walk the audience through your beginning, your career in sustainability? Because you, you're, this is what you do. Yeah, of course. And thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be with all of you guys today. Um, so I've spent the past 15 years of my career advancing and integrating sustainability in the private sector. And I've done that in a number of different but kind of complementary roles. So I started my career as a sustainability consultant for PwC, where I worked with Fortune 500 companies in a wide range of industries, uh, tackling the opportunities and challenges related to sustainability. So that's a really broad term, but what that really meant were things like creating their sustainability strategies, and then doing things like building robust reporting capabilities on sustainability metrics. So after seven and a half years at PwC, I then pursued an opportunity in industry with Banana Republic, which is a brand owned by Gap Inc. And then most recently, I um, was at PVH before uh, being at Run the Runway, where I helped launch and operationalize their latest sustainability strategy that was uh, launched in 2019. And then I also ran their global climate change program and their global water stewardship program. Fantastic. So you're with Rent the Runway, um, overseeing their sustainability um, program. So given that you've worked for a number of major players in the fashion industry prior to this role, set the stage for us about how production has changed in fashion over the past decade. Yeah, so to set the scene, and most simply put, more clothing is being produced now than ever before. And in the last two decades, the number of clothing produced is, is triple. So in 2000, it was roughly around 50 billion units of clothes globally each year. And now uh, in 2020, it's estimated to be at 150 billion units globally each year. So I, I'm sure it's not uh, surprising to know that a big kind of fuel for this and this drastic increase is really fast fashion. And so when we say fast fashion, we talk about kind of the quick turnaround of styles and collections at low price points. So consider the fact that the normal design calendar is kind of anchored in four seasons. For fast fashion, that design calendar is anchored in 52 micro seasons with styles being introduced, new styles, excuse me, each week. And I think it's important to highlight, though, as much as we have overproduction kind of on one side of the coin, we also have you know, rampant overconsumption on the other side of the coin. So we are consuming more clothing than ever before. And actually, it's estimated that we buy double the amount of clothes we used to purchase in the 90s. And then we're also utilizing those clothing less. So one in three young women report that after wearing a garment once or twice, they consider it to be old. And this is probably one of the reasons why three out of five clothing items from fast fashion end up in landfill. Mm. Just kind of staggering when you think about it. Um, and then the decade that we're in right now is also poised to be dominated by something called ultra fast fashion, which is everything I've just described, but more and faster. We came in fast. Yeah. I mean, we were like... I know, that was a lot. We were like... <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to slow it down. Yeah. We're going to talk about Rent the Runway. Yes. And I can't Cutting imagine scene. that many people haven't heard about Rent the Runway. I love it. You lo Everyone loves Rent the Runway. It's like cost-effective, amazing clothes, and now everyone wants to like save money and look great. Yes. Can you walk us through the model for those who don't know much about Rent the Runway. Of course. So Rent the Runway is the world's first and largest shared designer closet. We offer 18,000 different styles from over 780 different brand and designer partners. And customers can engage with us in three different ways. So you can subscribe and rent items monthly. You can rent individual items a la carte as needed. Or you can buy pre-loved items from us. And what's kind of unique and distinguishing about Rent the Runway is that our sustainability and financial objectives are actually aligned. So, you know, uh, when we, so I guess better put, 
the more that you wear a garment, the better outcomes it has on the environment, as well as our bottom line. And this is really a complete juxtaposition with the rest of the industry and fast fashion. So fast fashion has conditioned consumers to believe that clothing should be new and it should be plentiful. And that's just not something that we, uh, we believe is sustainable. So what we offer customers is shared access to fashion. So high quality designer garments at affordable price points. And we actually encourage our customers to buy less and wear more. I love that. And you look great. Like, oh, thank I love you. Your, yeah, I really, I love everything you're wearing. <laughs> so what does access over excess mean? And why is this important to communities of color? Yeah, so when we say access over access at Rent the Runway, this is kind of our belief that shared access to fashion has the ability to curb the negative impacts from its excess. So as I mentioned previously, the past 20 years, has been dominated by excessive production and consumption. And this has consequences, right? So the production of too many clothes too often is depleting our natural resources, it's contributing to climate instability, and it's perpetuating inequities. And specifically for communities of color, the reality is, is that the vast majority of clothing is produced in developing countries by people of color and they're often subject to working conditions that are extremely challenging and wages that are not commensurate with a living wage. So this insatiable appetite for consumers for plentiful new and cheap clothes is coming at the detriment of the people who are making the clothes. And if that's not enough, there's growing evidence to suggest that communities of color will be disproportionately impacted by climate change, which we know fashion is contributing to. So the most simplistic way that I can describe what's happening is that communities of color who are making clothes are often in vulnerable positions at work, and they're in even more vulnerable positions in their community mm -hmm. because of climate change. Wow. So intuitively, it sounds like renting is a more sustainable way to get dressed. Uh, but how did you go about quantifying that more concretely as a company? Yeah, so at Rent the Runway, when we founded, or when the company was founded 13 years ago, you know, sustainability was always kind of a key value proposition. So the company had many years worth of strategic programs and works around sustainability. Um, and so, and, and things like our scaled reusable packaging and using non toxic chemicals and cleaning. So in 2019, leadership really recognized that they needed to kind of do a deeper dive and really holistically understand the impacts of the business more broadly. And so this really kind of kicked off some initiatives, things like a materiality assessment, um, uh, understanding the carbon footprint of the company, so from a scope two and scope, or scope one and scope two emission standpoint, and then also conducting a life cycle assessment, which is also called an LCA. And so um, what an LCA looks, like, looks at is the full environmental impact of kind of an item of clothing, as we say, kind of cradle to grave. But what Run the Runway actually did was um, hire a third party consultant to conduct the LCA, not just of a singular product, but we've got a closet in the cloud that we have to account for. So this LCA looked at the entire rental business model in comparison to the dominant kind of linear consumption model that fashion is based off of right now. And I just can't emphasize enough how challenging it is to do kind of that scale of a life cycle assessment, but also this, we conducted this in 2020 in the midst of a pandemic. And I'm sure as you can imagine, it probably wasn't considered business critical at the time to many folks, but our leadership really doubled down on this being important and this being a priority to us, better understanding the holistic impacts of the business. So when I joined Rent the Runway, Last year, as head of sustainability, my job is really to take those foundational elements and pull them together into what's now our existing impact strategy, which we launched about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And so this really is kind of our approach to tackling the most pressing environmental and social issues facing our business and the environment, uh, or excuse me, the, the fashion industry larger. Um, the strategy itself is kind of our vision, again, around prioritizing access over excess. We've got 
two business ambitions, uh, four priorities, and 12 specific and measurable goals to drive progress over the next five years. So to the speaker who was here earlier talking about transparency, we want to be able to provide that transparency to our customers and other stakeholders. Um, one goal that I think is particularly very interesting and I'm, I'm proud of is that we set a goal to displace the need for new production of half a million new garments by fiscal year end 2026. And so this is really an extension of our work to address rampant uh, overproduction in fashion. And again, uh, really proud and, and happy that we're doing something like that. For the brands and designers in the room, what opportunity does the rental market represent for them? I think a significant amount. Um, so Rent the Runway is really a two-sided discovery engine. So we have customers who are looking for brands and try, wanting to try new brands mm -hmm. that they love, whereas on the other end, we have designers and brands who are looking to acquire new customers. And so when we talk about customer acquisition, one of my favorite statistics that we have is that 82% of our subscribers say that they actually buy a designer product that they've worn and experienced through our platform and rented before. So, so it's like a discovery. So if you rent it, you try it, it's a new brand. Exactly, you, you fall in love with it. So you're more likely to shop that brand full price after. Exactly, and we also know that um, in the first year of subscribing to Rent the Runway, on average, you try 54 different brands. Mm. So we know that you're doing exactly what we want you to do, which is explore and try new things. Um, secondly, what we offer brands is unparalleled data. So unlike a traditional retailer or wholesaler where they sell your garment and that's, you get probably sales information and that's it, we, we have to maintain the garments throughout its product use and customer use phase. So we're getting information like how much, uh, how much it's being worn, who's wearing it, do they like it, do they not like it, fit wear and tear, durability. And so all of those things we're able to package and provide that information to designers, which is then informing designs or future designs and how they're actually going to make something more, more durable in the future. Another way that we're partnering with designers as well is we have something called exclusive designs where we're actually partnering with a designer where they're focused more on the creative and we're helping with the sourcing component. And so this is kind of a, a similar take as to kind of uh, exclusive content that Netflix will develop. It's kind of like our exclusive content for the Rent the Runway community a la uh, a huge designer name. And so one other thing I definitely want to mention to you about a benefit for the design community is Run the Runway is prioritizing using our plant platform to amplify and support diversity in fashion. And so we're very proud of the fact that we were one of the first brands to sign the 15% pledge. Mm. And since joining um, or since signing the pledge, we've tripled the number of black designers on our platform. Secondly, we made a commitment and we exceeded the commitment that we had for $1 million in spend with black designers from signing that pledge. And we just knew that that was something we wanted to also double down on and that investment and that work was incredibly important. So I'm happy to share that not only how are we prioritizing uh, promoting and amplifying diversity as a part of our impact strategy, but we have a specific goal of 10 million in cumulative send on black designers over the next five years. So really excited to be able to make that commitment and hold ourselves accountable to it. Um, lastly, what I'll share is kind of a great example to show kind of the power of the Rent the Runway platform for a designer. And that's really gonna be, um, so Autumn Adegbo. So she was featured as an emerging designer on Rent the Runway in 2018. And I'm wearing one of her fabulous tops right now that you can also rent. Um, I wanna say about, or flash forward, and a year and a half after being introduced, Autumn was then picked up by major retailers such as Nordstrom's, Goop, Intermix. She is one of our most popular designers and she's now received significant traction since being featured on Rent the Runway and we're so happy about that. That's a great story, actually. We, we, um, we love her. Yes, we who, love her brand. who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, she's, she's great. That's a good story. Um, Three, work, work, work. I mean, you, have, you are laying it down. Like, y'all are doing the work. I'm like, um, so what are the initial steps brands in the audience can take on their sustainability journey? Because this is incredibly resource intensive. 
I would just say first and foremost, just recognizing that this work matters and it is important and it does drive meaningful change. Like first and foremost, I really, uh, I really just want to emphasize that it, it takes you just understanding that as like a great first step. Yeah. Um, I would say secondly, we constantly tell consumers to think consciously, mm -hmm. to purchase consciously, get this conscious product, that conscious product. I think if you're a designer, you kind of need to take that mindset as well. So what can I do to be a conscious designer? Because you are controlling everything about the raw materials, how you're designing the product, where you're fulfilling your order from, and all of those things add up and have impacts to the environment, to society, to communities. And so if you're starting to think through the lens of all of my decisions as a designer have an impact, that's gonna help kind of course correct and at least make you aware of that and start to maybe think through alternatives that could be better. Um, I would say lastly too, this is definitely an overused term, but you can't manage what you don't measure. <laughs> and so the foundation of everything, similar to kind of what I described about Rent the Runway, doing all this work in terms of understanding our impacts, right? At the end of the day, you just have to have a good understanding from a data standpoint of you know, what your raw materials are, how you're sourcing things, where you're sourcing things. And so I would just say, uh, as unglamorous as it sounds, and it is unglamorous, um, getting a good foundation of your data is gonna be incredibly helpful as well. In every aspect of your business. Yeah, yeah, I mean, again, like it's a simple exercise, but your raw material sourcing, mm -hmm. the weight of it, where is it coming from? Is it virgin, is it not? Is it recycled, organic, recycled polyester? All those things matter, and being able to collect and track that data is gonna be ultimately important at the end of the day. I cannot let you go without talking about the dry cleaner, the dry, the largest yes. dry cleaner. <laughs> so can you explain to the audience what I'm talking about? Because I, every meeting, every business meeting that I've been in in my career, since, you, since Rent the Runway started, there's this story about the largest dry cleaner in the world. Can you talk to the audience about this? Yeah. So unique to Rent the Runway is that we are maintaining garments over a significant period of time. And that's on, honestly how we're able to achieve things like displacing the need for new production is keeping garments in as great as condition as we can. We do that through a number of ways. We have a professional team of seam, seamstresses on site to repair our garments over time. And one of the other things that we have to do is clean our garments to maintain the, the integrity and the quality as they're being shipped to more and more customers. That involves dry cleaning and also wet cleaning. So when we talk about the, the cleaning process that Rent the Runway, we're talking about those cleaning processes that we have on site to maintain the quality and longevity of our product. Um, we've always used non-toxic chemicals in our cleaning processes, and we are very proud of that fact. And it's the size of a football field? Like we, have, we have two facilities, so one in actually in Secaucus, New Jersey, and we have another one in Fort Worth, uh, Dallas, Texas. Yeah, the thing is large. It's like the <laughs> large, I mean, I, every meeting it's like, it's the size of a football, but it's, it's large, it's well maintained, and you know, when you think about, you know, one item being shared by thousands. I was just gonna say, Felita. Say it. This is a great, this is a great point. So, when I try to really double down and explain what the impact that Run the Runway can drive, so go back to that number I gave you, right? Staggering, 150 billion clothes being produced every year, right? That is very hard to conceptualize or even visualize. Conversely, Run the Runway is able to dress hundreds and thousands of women every year from the amount of clothes that fit into two warehouses. That is, that is power in shared access to, to fashion. I'm just going to drop the mic on that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>